Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're checking out nine British things the rest of the world really needs. And I just think that's easier. It's also better for the waistline and could explain some differences between America and Britain in other ways. Uh -oh. And so the ones that I have, for instance, because you were all very fascinated by the duvet that I have, hello. Yo, that was called a teaser. That makes us want to see what she's talking about. What's she talking about? What are these nine British things? T, public transportation, nationalized healthcare, fish and chips, a monarchy. What else could it be? I don't know. Let's watch and find out. Y'all be sure to go to Girl Gone London and like and subscribe. This is Kaylin. She's pretty cool. She's a nice, nice person. Hello. Hello. And welcome. Thank you. Back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK hey, and American citizen. And today we are talking about nine British things that the rest of the world really needs. But I'm going to be honest with you. They're very specific. We're okay. not talking about electric kettles. We're not talking about roundabouts. We're talking about some weird stuff that probably- Okay, y'all, see, this is what I like about Girl Gone London. She goes beyond that first level. This is what the Brits do. This is how they say this word. This is what they eat. This is all the da 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 She goes beyond. She's got first-hand experience. We're getting the good stuff, y'all. Specificity. Specificity. Kaylin, what you got for me? Hit me. We're not talking about roundabouts. We're talking about some weird stuff that probably no one else has thought of. Oh, so stuff. let's get going in a second. Before we get going, I do want to say, if you haven't seen my announcement yet, the For the Love YouTube channel is the name of the new channel that I have following people's unique interests and hobbies. I did announce it in another video, but in case you haven't seen that, um, the first episode is about model railways and we're going to be doing lots of different topics over the course of this channel's life. Learning how to forage in the wilderness, riding oh. unicycles, racing RC cars. You guys have really uh, put out the call for me to do sea a cars. Warhammer episode, so I'm trying to arrange that and learn about it. Um, so check out that episode in the link below. What's a sea car? What's a Warhammer? I don't know what... Hang on, what? RC cars. I do know what that is. What's a Warhammer? Warhammer. Oh, okay, okay. It's this game. I bet people get really into, um, like, the figurines and stuff. Okay, got it. It's like hobbies. Racing RC cars. You guys have really... Uh, put out the call for me to do Jesus a Warhammer episode, like so I'm trying to arrange that and learn about it. Um, so check out that episode in the link below. And if you have any hobbies or interests that you would love to share with me or know of people who might be interested in sharing, please do email me at the email address in my YouTube channel. Anyway, let's get started on this video. They're in no particular order of importance because they're all very important. Okay. Number one. The brown tourist signs that point you in the direction of various activities, castles, um, oh. sometimes, I don't know, like a farm you can visit. Um, <laughs> these brown signs are road signs in the UK. And I just think, how fun. You get to drive along, you're going to a destination, and you're like, oh, look, Legoland is that way. We should go that way. I feel like in the US, we don't have signs like this. So you, hmm. obviously there are lots of activities to do, but you're not just gonna randomly pass a road sign telling you this way to Legoland. You're gonna have to look it up for yourself. So I feel like I've discovered, not that I spend a lot of time at Legoland cause I'm not the target demographic, but just an example. I feel like I've learned about different places from simply driving along the road and seeing these brown tourist place signs. I would suggest that maybe brown is not the most appealing color and I would, um, if somebody's listening who's in charge of the color, suggest that maybe we do something like brighter or like rainbow or hmm. more exciting than brown. But brown rainbow. is the color they've gone with. So we'll stick with it for now. But the tourist signs to different visitor attractions or tourist attractions or castles in the UK, I think is a good idea. That is a great idea. I think we sort of have that in the States but they're usually telling you how many miles something, you know, it's usually like exit 47. It'll be like a subset of the, like the road sign. You know what I mean? And they're green. Let me show y'all. Oh, Google's changed. 
What's the kind of my neighborhood? Let's just see. Like, um, uh, let me see. Let me see. How do I pet a little dude there? Let's see. Oh, look at this. See? See right here. Park road closed ahead. That's not exactly what I was looking for. Okay, there's one. Observatory Greek theater. See? I mean, it's a dirty sign. We, 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 we kind of got those. But they're green. I agree with her, though. I think we need more. I like this idea. Okay, next up is the traffic lights that turn yellow before they turn green. So I've talked about this in my differences between UK and USA traffic light video. So if you're interested in the topic, what check that mean? out. What but in America, lights only go from green to yellow to red or amber as it's called in the UK. Right. Um, and then it goes directly from red to green without any other color in the middle. So you're right. never entirely sure what's gonna happen. In the UK, the traffic light pattern is to go through the amber or yellow bit for both um, turning red and turning green. Really? Which is very helpful as a pedestrian because you know if the light is about to turn green for the cars. Oh. And it's also helpful as a driver just because I don't know, you can get ready to go. It's not an instant red to green. You've huh. got a little bit of notice. Again, I said this video was quite random. Y'all, I didn't know that that's how traffic lights worked in Britain. I think if they changed that in America, people would just interpret, you know, if it went from red to yellow, then green, people would just interpret that yellow as green. Just go. Because right now, when it turns yellow, people speed up. It's like a Pavlovian response. Oh, you got to make it speed up, get through the light. That's crazy. I've never heard that one. UK traffic lights sequence. Red, stop and wait at the stop line. Red and amber, prepare to move, but wait until the green shows to set off. This, this is very British English. Green, you can go if it is safe to do so. Give way to any pedestrians who are crossing. Oh, it's red and amber at the same time. Oh, now see, that would be better. Because if the red light's still on, I think Americans would realize, I still can't go, but I'm getting ready to go. That would actually help a lot, y'all. A lot of times the light turns green and the person right in front doesn't realize it, so the people behind have to start honking. Happens all the time. All the time. I think this would mitigate that. Yes, Kaylin. Yes, Kaylin. Yes, we need this. Hey, Pete Buttigieg, get on it before your term is over. The next one on my list is Weetabix, which mm -hmm. I did think was basically war food the first time I moved to the UK. But here's the thing about Weetabix. We don't really have it in the US and it's very I've versatile. I've never heard of it. So you're not entirely sure what to do with it as an American when you first encounter it. Some people um, actually eat it like dry with butter, which I haven't tried, but that's what I would have assumed that you were supposed to do with it. Most people add some sort of like milk to it to make it mushy and like a cereal, um, but it's very it's like versatile. Granola? So you can make mm. it very mushy like a porridge. You can make it like mushy in the middle, but not mushy on the outside, or maybe it's the opposite. You can just do lots of things with it. And I know that you can find it in other countries, um, but we don't have it so much in America. So that's why it made my list. I encountered Weetabix. it for the first time when I moved to the UK. I've never heard of Weetabix, except maybe maybe it was on the th her thumbnail for this. Yeah, there it is. That's where I saw the word. But that's all I know about it. What's up with Weetabix? Weetabix. I am a, no I am a granola boy. I'll get down on some granola. I can get some for $10. Poop like a champion, soluble corn fiber cereal. <laughs> poop like a champion? I want poop like a champion. Wait a bix. It has its own Wikipedia page, y'all. Weetabix is a breakfast cereal produced by Weetabix Limited in the United Kingdom. Well, what do you know? It comes in the form of palm-sized wheat biscuits. Variants include organic, blah, 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 blah. It's made from whole grain wheat. That's healthy. It's got it's got your fiber. It's sold in Canada and the U.S. We do have it here. Produced in the U.K. since 1932. So it's kind of, it, I mean, Great Depression food. That makes sense. Oh, and it's got, they've got minis. Oh, oat bix. I'm down with, I'm down with that. I want to try Weetabix. Hey, Pete Buttigieg, get on it. Next on my list, 
and this is just getting more specific and more specific, are the fact that in the UK, you often buy crisps that come in individual packets within a larger packet. So let me explain. Mostly in the US, I'm not saying we can't buy the snack size versions, you can. But a lot of our crisp bags is just one giant bag yeah. of crisps or chips as we would call them in the right. US. So in order to pack these for school lunches or to not eat a million of them at one time, you would have to portion them out or put it in a Ziploc bag or something like that. Is Ziploc a brand here? I don't think it is, is no? it? We'll leave this in, comment below. Let's find out. Can you buy Ziploc bags in Britain? Literally in every supermarket, normally near big bin bags and tinfoil. The answer is yes. I don't think it is. Is it? It is. We'll leave this in. Comment below. Have you heard of Ziploc? Anyway, so in the <laughs> UK, I often find that you buy a bag of crisps, but often it is separated into smaller snack size that's bags smart. for portion I mean... control, for packing and lunches, for things like that. And I just think that's easier. It's also better for the waistline and could explain some differences between America and Britain in other ways. Yeah, y'all, that's true. I'm thinking portion size. We do have those bags of smaller bags, but it's rare. It's like for soccer moms to pack in kids lunches like she says, but it it would help with portion control. Cause sometimes y'all, if you got a big family size bag, you're just shoving it in. You're not even paying attention. Just watching TV, shoving it in. You don't even know. Next thing you know, you've eaten the whole bag. Hey, Pete Buttigieg, get on it. And the next on my list is an amazing invention. And that is a duvet that clips together that has both a uh, like fall and winter version and a summer version and the ability to combine them to make it even thicker or take them apart. So in the US, we typically use what we call comforters, which okay, often right, right, right. do not have a separate covering. It's more like a really thick blanket. Yeah. But in the UK, duvets are the most popular. So you put a covering over the duvet. You wouldn't use the duvet on its own. However, to take it a step further, there are duvets that you can buy where again, they have these little clips. And so the ones that I have, for instance, cause you were all very fascinated by the duvet that I have, um, is one in which the thin version is just for the summer. Then the thicker version is for the fall and spring, but there's two, no, there's four clips on the four corners and you can clip it all together and that's your winter duvet. And this was all purchased as one purchase. So you can mix, oh. you can match. If you're cold, you can add more, you can take off. It's just, it's a brilliant invention. I'm always the right temperature. That is brilliant. Yeah, comforters are annoying to wash. They're big, they take up the whole washing machine, they take up the whole dryer, they're bulky, they don't dry quickly. It would be great to have a cover. It would be great to have a cover. I just pile more blankets on when I get too cold, you know, but it would be cool to have a summer and winter comforter duvet. I'm trying to visualize these clips and I can't. Let's look it up. British a duvet. What's the difference between a duvet and a comforter? So you're shopping for bedding, blah, 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 blah. They're very different. A duvet is a type of bedding commonly filled with natural or synthetic fibers, typically down wood or feather wool or feather. Comforter works like a quilted blanket filled with synthetic fibers. A duvet comes with two separate pieces, an insert and a cover. A comforter is one piece of bedding that is quilted. It would be so nice to just have to wash a cover instead of the whole comforter. You know? Now I want a duvet, damn it. Pete Buttigieg. Next on my list are sturdy front doors. Britain has very sturdy front doors compared to the US and I think this mm -hmm. is something that they should be very proud of and I'm very happy about um, as somebody who doesn't want my house broken into and wants to feel generally safe when I'm sleeping at night. In America, I feel like our doors just are flimsier. They're often made of wood. I feel like you can just break them easier. In the UK, doors are often made out of different materials. And you will see these different materials in my UK versus USA front door video if you're interested in front door fun facts. However, as a general rule in the UK, doors tend to be very sturdy 
and just yeah made of sturdier materials and i appreciate that and it's hmm. better for in the uk keeping heat in the house which is great for this climate but also again great for my general uh belief that no one is going to knock my door down in the middle of the night i've never heard this one the first thing that i noticed when comparing doors in my home state of florida to doors in the uk was that the uk ones have always felt heavier and sturdier and that is really what prompted my belief that this could become a video because i thought there's something there huh. our doors are different but how so I'm not a door expert, don't know if you knew that, <laughs> but um, I consulted the internet yet again and found that according to associatedwindows.co.uk, the four most common types of door within the UK are UPVC, aluminum, timber, and composite. Probably oh. they said aluminum, but I'm saying aluminum here. They also have a really good chart to show us the different types and how they rank for various factors, so I will put that up now. Have a look. What is the best front door material? All right. Wood is the most commonly used material to build front doors in many parts of the U.S. Yeah, I think my door is like pressed wood, and then I have a gate in front of my door, like a like a a metal great door in front of my door because I live in a bad neighborhood. But also, again, great for my general uh, belief that no one is going to knock my door down in the middle of the night. You know what, though? If someone wants to break into your house bad enough, they're going to get in. You know, they're going to get in. Next up are Christmas crackers. This is a pretty British thing. Americans oh, right, think right, of crackers right. as this. Um, we don't know what things, Christmas right? crackers are necessarily we poppers, unless we've I think. been exposed to or British no, wait, culture. Don't. It just adds a different layer of fun to a Christmas meal. It's something for people to talk about what little trinket you got in your cracker. You can go around asking each other the jokes. Like it's a solid 10 to 15 minutes of conversation <laughs> at the Christmas dinner table. And nice. I, nobody ever uses anything that they get in a Christmas cracker. It's usually all junk, um, but that's not really the point. That's fun. The point is the fun of it. And yeah. they also get to explode. So I feel like Americans would love these. Not sure why we don't have them. And that is something that maybe Britain could export to the US. We do have these. My brother's in-laws do this every Christmas and we put the crown on. So I think some Americans do that, but maybe just only the ones with British ancestry or British loyalists. The next thing on my list are small scooters for kids. Now, in the US growing up, I did have a scooter. It was very exciting time when I got my first scooter, however, Typically, and this is solely based on my own personal experience as someone born in 1992 and lived in Florida. So it's a very specific <laughs> example. Maybe other places are different. However, scooters in the US tend to be for an older uh, demographic in terms of older kids um, and teenagers. So when I got my first scooter, I was probably mm. like 12. Here in the UK, the little kids have these little tiny adorable scooters that look like this that you basically get from the age <laughs> that you can walk Cute. and my hypothesis on this is the differences in culture and the differences in how much people walk in the uk versus in the usa so i've noticed that families hmm. will get them for their kids here in the uk to go on walks because your small child is going to have more fun going on the scooter is going to go faster you can drag them along it's just easier to take your kid on a walk with a scooter. It's fun. In the US, we don't really go on walks for fun. That's not entirely true. Some people we like do. hiking and stuff, yes. but it's just not the same kind of culture. Okay. I would use to use my scooter in my neighborhood to just kind of like go to my friend's house or something like that. I didn't need a scooter as a small child at the age of three in the US because we weren't really, I don't know, we weren't like walking anywhere that needed it. That's interesting. Y'all, I had a big wheel when I was that age, which is a very different thing. You're sitting down, kind of like laid, leaning back, pedaling. It's a, it's a different vibe. I never had a scooter. I always wanted one. I went from big wheel to bicycle straight away and then a skateboard 
that I could never ride. Why am I suddenly doing vocal fry? But a, a big wheel, it's probably a lot harder to drag along, like for a parent to pull along, because it's like lower to the ground. I think the big wheels are preparing the children for a more of a motorcycle mentality. Hey, Pete Buttigieg, get on it. And finally on my list of British things that I love and that everybody should get to experience, is bunting and decorating things with bunting. Americans, we don't know what bunting is. Again, something I didn't realize- Wait, have I heard this before? I've heard this word before. Is this where you put yarn over stuff? I'm not sure. This was a thing until I moved to the UK. Don't get me wrong, Americans love to decorate and we have different kind of flags and different types of things that you might call bunting, but the triangular fabric or paper that looks like this um seems like a very british thing whether it's hmm. like a jubilee a birthday party i feel like it's like somehow related a lot to like royal or like patriotic events but you could use it for anything like a a spring event might have like pastel color bunting brits just love bunting and i that. think it's cute i think it's a nice way to decorate it's easy it's also easier to fold and to store than other forms of decoration because the triangles just kind of fit together easier instead of something like a like a paper chain that is very difficult to store anyway mm. that brings me to the end of my list i hope you were bunting an old world seed eating songbird related to the finches typically with brown streaked plumage and a boldly marked head Decorative flags, wide streamers, or draperies made of fabric or plastic paper or cardboard in imitation of fabric. Bunting are festive or patriotic decorations made of fabric, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I mean, I've definitely seen that before in the United States, but it's not, it's not common. Bunting textile was originally a specific type of lightweight worsted wool fabric, generally known as tammy manufactured from the turn of the 17th century and used for making ribbons and flags. Yeah, I hope we need bunting, y'all. Hey, Pete Buttigieg, get on it. The term bunting makes it seem like, like a lawn sport or like a boating thing. Just to recap, brown tourist signs. I mean, we got the green ones, but we need more of them. Traffic lights, we need that. That extra yellow going from red to green. We need that. Hey, Pete Buttigieg, Weetabix, we have it, we just, it's not normal. Crisps in individual bags, we have it. Duvets, we have them, it's just not as normal as a comforter. Front doors, we have them, but yeah, most of them are just wood. Easily breakable, if you've ever seen the movie The Shining, you know what I'm talking about. All you need is an axe and determination. Crackers, we got them, we just don't know about them that much. We have plenty of plastic junk at Christmas time. Scooters. We have scooters. Yeah, maybe we need more scooters for children. Scooters for children. Pete Buttigieg, get on it. Bunting. We have it, but we need more. This was good. See how she always finds stuff that you don't normally hear about. Be sure to go to Girl Gone London and like and subscribe. And if you made it this far on the video, maybe give me a like and subscribe, you know? I mean, maybe if you want, I'd appreciate it. But, you know, I don't want to I don't want to put the sell on you too hard. I don't want to seem desperate or you know, I'd like to thank my patrons. I'd like to thank my Buy Me Coffee folks. Thank you all for watching this with me, and I'll see you next time. Later. Pete Buttigieg, get on it.